Hey guys, it's Gergen from Easy, and today Forks and I are going to give you some subclass specific tips on how to beat Arborit with a raid team. But first, let's get into the general overview. At the moment, it's very difficult to beat Arborit without beating him in his first phase. This guide will be mainly focusing on the roles of each subclass for the first phase, but Arborit may be adjusted in the future to force phases 2 and 3. In Arborit's first phase, he has 4 main attacks, a cone AoE that does damage over time, a circular AoE that does a huge amount of damage at once, and he also likes to throw 4 poison blobs that give you a 50% armor debuff and do a considerable amount of damage. He likes to constantly swipe at the main tank as well, so you should back away from him when he starts his swiping animation because the range of his swipe can be very unpredictable. If you get hit by any of these attacks and you're not a tank, you're dead! You will also spawn turrets that can two-shot you if you're not the main tank. In Phase 2, Arborut switches from his Conal AoE to an AoE with three cones that do the same effect as the cone from before. The Poison Blobs in this phase will be thrown more frequently, and they will also be targeted at the main tank. He will also start spawning Ents that will be very annoying. In this phase, the DPS Blade Masters and Essence Mages will switch jobs, where Essence Mages will now focus on the boss, and Blade Masters will target adds. Arborut's last phase is even more difficult because he gets a damage and a speed buff. This phase is nearly impossible to defeat unless you're fast enough to avoid his constant attacks. The same strategy for phase 2 applies for this. As a DPS mage, your role is simple. You just have to destroy turrets as soon as you see them, and revive any blade master that you see. When there aren't any turrets or dead people, which is very unlikely, the DPS mage may shoot charged shots at Arborut's crystal. When the stagger multiplier passes 800 to 1200%, depending on the amount of people in the raid, where 800% is for smaller groups and 1200% is for larger groups, the DPS mages may, may focus on breaking the crystal and staggering the boss, while still killing any turrets that may spawn. DPS mage should also use their ultimate whenever they can on Arborut's crystal by kamikaze flying into it. When Arboru is staggered, you must go for the crystals on Arboru's back. Support and tank essence mages will have a harder time with these due to the collision between players and their blasters. Also, as a DPS mage, you're very prone to dying. If you do happen to get hit by his poison blobs or his turrets though, then you still may be able to survive. Seek out healing immediately whenever you get hit by any of these, and if you get hit by a cone, then you still may be able to survive as well, but only if you get constant healing from a healer. Arborut's Stomp, which is also known as his Circle AoE, will one-shot you, and so will his Swipes, so make sure to keep a distance from him, so that you won't have any trouble with either of these. As a Support Mage, your goal is to keep everyone alive, especially Blade Masters. If someone does happen to die, which will happen, Revive them, and make sure to prioritize Blade Masters. Throw your Hydra Splat or use Erupting Spring on them after reviving them. If there's nobody to heal, try and help out with turret management. If the main tank dies for whatever reason, revive them immediately. There will be one healer designated for the main tank, so they probably won't die, but still you need to focus on reviving them if they do. If the main tank knows what they're doing, you shouldn't have a problem with this though. When Arborid is staggered, try and hit the top crystals, and use your ultimate only when he's staggered because that can also help kill him. If someone does happen to get hit by a cone, you need to focus on healing them, especially if they're a blade master, because the cone does damage over time and it's possible to keep someone alive if they do get hit by the cone. However, you might have trouble doing this because the cone does a lot of damage per tick, and it also happens for 8 ticks, and your cooldowns might not be able to keep up with that. But still, you need to focus on keeping everyone alive. And you shouldn't need to worry about the DPS mages too much because they won't be close to the boss, but you still need to try and revive them if they do happen to die. As the off tank, you should be focusing on turrets and revives. Also, because you're off tank, you should never pull the boss for any reason whatsoever. This will only cause extra confusion and death. You can avoid this issue by switching to your Chilling Loop Godstone. 
As always, because Blade Masters are essential in defeating Arborite, you must prioritize their life over anyone else's. Also, have one off tank prepared to step in for the main tank in case they die. Once the main tank is revived, however, you must switch back to your original job of turret control. When Arborite is staggered, use your ultimate on his top crystals and try to use your lasers on the top crystals as well, as Blade Masters will be covering the bottom crystals and they will be unable to reach the top crystals. You should also avoid chaining Arboru as much as possible because this might cause him to aggro on you. If you do happen to get aggro, call it out immediately so that the main tank can try and get their aggro back. The main tank for this raid will be an Essence Mage. The Essence Mage must make sure to grab aggro off the beginning and everyone else needs to let them. They need to chain the boss and pull him away from the center and start kiting him around the outside of the arena. You should rotate in the direction that shows Arborot's crystal facing the center. This will make it easier for everyone else to access the crystal. You should also save your teleport for when Arborot does his cone AoE because then you should teleport behind him and wait for the second sound effect which is kind of like a snapping sound, and then you can go back in front of him. You should avoid his stomp by gliding away from him, and you should avoid his swiping by doing the same. You should also avoid his poison blobs by moving closer to him, and as a general rule of thumb, you should always be closer to him so that the Blade Masters don't need to keep chasing the boss. When Arbro is staggered, it is your job to move him to the center of the arena so that the event is completed when he is killed. If he does happen to get back up for phase 2, you need to continue doing what you did in the first phase, except it will be a lot harder to avoid his AoEs. As the main tank, if you do happen to die, you should call it out immediately so that other people can come and revive you. If you lose aggro, you should call that out as well, so that people know that you've lost aggro, and they can stop fighting to help you regain aggro. The main tank for this fight should have been predetermined, before you fight the boss. If you haven't already coordinated who is going to be main tank, then this will cause a lot of confusion and many different people might be fighting for aggro. Hey guys, it's Forks from EZ, and I'm here today to continue where Gurgen left off, except with the Blademaster subclasses. When it comes to Blademaster subclasses, right now Blademaster DPS is most vital for the world boss. Blademaster DPS is responsible for increasing Arborit's stagger damage percentage using the Sunder Cadence ability and Omni Strike, which you want to use right away, and after that as much as possible, on the crystal that spawns on his leg. The stagger damage percentage you want changes based on the number of players you have. For 12 and under, you want to get it to around 800%. For 13 to 20, you want to get it to around 1000%. And for more than 20, you want it to be around 1200%. This is necessary in order to beat him on the first dagger and skip phase 2 and 3 of the fight. If you don't manage to beat him on the first dagger and enter a later phase, he becomes much more difficult to beat. After the stagger's damage percentage is at an acceptable level, Blademaster DPS should continue to focus on breaking the crystals on his legs in order to stagger him before the timeline runs out. Once he is staggered, all Blademasters should focus on breaking the crystals that appear lower down, usually on his arms and legs. Attacking the crystals does more damage, and when they break, the stagger duration increases, giving you more time to finish them off. Blademaster Tank is also very important. Their job is to double his stagger duration using their cadence ability Bong. This is displayed by the blue outline around the stagger bar. This caps a double, unlike Sunder, which has no cap on increasing stagger damage percent, but it is still very useful. After a total of 10 bonks have been landed on the boss, his stagger duration will double. Once again, Blademaster tanks will want to focus their bonks on the crystal on his leg. After the bonk bar is maxed, you should focus on reviving allies and taking out the turrets. After the Blademaster DPS have the stagger damage percent at an acceptable level, then you can focus on breaking the crystal on his leg in order to stagger him, while still taking out any additional turrets that he spawns, as they also increase his stagger bar. Once he is staggered, just like Blademaster DPS, you should focus on breaking the crystals on his arms and legs. Blademaster support is responsible for keeping all of the other Blademasters alive. Since Blademasters have to be standing right underneath Arborit, they are at an increased risk of dying compared to Essence Mages. Divine Blade is a great way to get some group heals, and the support dash can buff up the other Blademasters with some armor, allowing them to take a couple more hits and giving you more time to heal them before they die. Consecration is a bit less effective, as everyone is moving. 
The most important part of support is reviving others. People tend to die a lot, and it is important to make sure that everyone is alive, especially when Arborit staggers, in order to do the most damage possible. If everyone is alive, you can help take out some of the turrets. After the boss is staggered, just like the other Blade Masters, you should focus on the crystals on his arms and legs, but only after you've made sure that all the other players are alive. And for each subclass, once you've defeated him, make sure you pick up the item that he drops so you don't lose it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more Essence Zealots content, and remember, it's GG Easy with EZ.